Thank you for the introduction, Phil. Um, so my name is Therese Lardner and I'm the Leadership and Engagement Coach um, with Mindset Coaching and Consulting. So for about the last 12 years or so, I've been working with business leaders to help their people and their businesses to thrive and grow. So today I'll be taking you through um, a bit of a cook's tour of engagement um, and giving you some, some stats and some ways to think a little bit differently about engagement. So what do we know about it? <clears throat> Only about 13, so this is based on research of course, only about 13% of all employees would describe themselves as highly engaged. So that means they're pumping, that means they're highly productive, they're happy at work. A whopping 26% of employees would describe themselves as actively disengaged. That's the exact percent. So they are either completely unproductive or they may be starting to demonstrate behaviours that would seem like sabotage or undermining the workplace. A review website found that about 54% of employees would recommend their, pla their uh, workplace as a good place to work. So about half would say, yep, please join our business. That's, that's not many. In the IT industry, about two thirds of workers said that if they really tried, within 60 days, they could find a better job. Two months, they said, if I really put my mind to it, I could actually go somewhere else and find something better. That's quite shocking. 80% of businesses said that their employees were overwhelmed with the amount of tasks they needed to complete and the amount of information they needed to take on board. And 21% of those businesses said it was actually urgent or critical. There's a real problem here. One of the things that I do in my work as well is encourage leaders to think about the, the part of disengagement that you cannot measure. That's how it feels to lead disengaged employees. What it feels like when you overhear someone dealing inappropriately with a customer. What it feels like when you need to walk into a room and deal with that poor performing employee once again. It gives you that sinking feeling in your stomach. And that's something that, that absolutely cannot be measured. So, where does in, a, engagement sit in the broader picture of how an employee moves through the business? I like to think about it as a lens. So, engagement and well-being of employees is actually the outcome of wise investment in onboarding and employee development. So, it's an outcome. What you then get from a highly engaged workforce is what I call mobility, it's a bit of a buzzword, sorry, but it's employees that are skilled enough to move within the business, they're skilled enough to stretch themselves, they're happy, they're satisfied, and what you then get from that are individuals that are growing and businesses that are growing, so then it adds to the bottom line. So how do we measure engagement? Traditionally, engagement is measured through very um, expensive, um, cumbersome and time-consuming online surveys. So the result of that is threefold. The first is that you tend to get information that is exceptionally complex, line graphs, big, eloquent, paragraphs about what that means, but it's really hard to implement because the strategies just aren't there. You can't implement a line graph. There's no strategy there. There's, there's no connection with strategy. What you often find as well with those very cumbersome surveys is that it takes quite a lot of time for the data to come back to the business. So you may get a report three to six months after you've actually, your employees have actually completed the survey. Now if you think about it, where is your business now compared to where it was six months ago? Your business has evolved, this has changed. Um, implement, um, initiatives have been implemented during that time. So you might find that when you get that, re that report back, it's out of date. It's, it's almost irrelevant in terms of what's been happening in your business during that six month period. What you also then get is that report going in the bottom drawer and gathering a big layer of dust because it's either irrelevant because it's out of date or it's so complex that it can't be actually implemented. There's no strategy there. 
leaders see a massive expensive waste of time and employees just say another bloody survey that went nowhere. So then you start to breed cynicism about these type of feedback processes in your employees. So if we take a little bit more of a detailed approach to thinking about engagement, there's a few schools of thought. The first is that engagement is about minds, it's cognitive, it's, it's in your brain. So this talks to an employee understanding the broader vision, as Phil was saying, of the business, working with it in a, within a team to contribute to that broader vision and goal. The second school of thought talks about, um, it's called active, affective engagement, so it's about the heart. So being engaged, enthused, inspired to perform within the organisation, so it's that connection. Based on my research and my understanding in this field, I think a third option actually makes better sense and it's a combination of those two. So this is the model that we, that we look to to combine those two. So I'll briefly take you through the seven elements of that model. I'm not going to go through sub-elements and all of that detail, but this is a bit of a cook's tour of what we can look at in terms of engagement. So the first thing there is purposeful work. So this is that tasks and projects are meaningful um, and that employees have control over what it is that they're doing. Management and performance is the day-to-day -day supervision, the feedback, the very hands-on element of that. Working environment is looking at whether the employees have the support and the resources to actually work to their potential. Development culture is very self-explanatory. Is there a culture and an environment of ongoing learning with the organisation? Um, are mistakes blamed or are they learned from? That type of thing. Leadership and vision um, talks to whether there is a clear vision for the team and the organisation and whether that is communicated in a really compelling way, whether you're actually getting people on board with that vision, you're influencing that, um, them towards that goal. Efficiency, again very self-explanatory, are things done in the simplest and most effective way within the organisation? Is there a focus on simplicity? or are we focused on these processes that actually put noise around what it is that we need to do. The last one there is around wellbeing. So this looks to the inspiration, the connection, the energy to actually get on with the job. I think this graphic actually is the main version of those big old black glasses, but anyway. Um, so if we make some wise investment in engagement, what is the outcome? What are we going to get? We're going to get employees that are less stressed. Um, connecting back to Alicia's um, presentation on mental health, um, research actually finds that strong engagement, so highly engaged employees are less likely to um, suffer from anxiety and depression. They have stronger emotional resilience they have that bounce back ability. Um, it makes good financial sense for the business as well. Research finds that highly engaged employees per month as a business unit bring in about eighty dollars to $120,000 more than disengaged employees and they're between 1% to 4% more profitable. So when you think about just that stat, in terms of your business, engagement really, really matters. Engaged employees tend to seek more feedback. They want to do a better job. They want to commit more to the organisation. They tend to perform to a higher level as well. And they're more likely to deliver strong customer service, um, less, as I said, less stress, and they're less likely to leave the organisation, less likely to take time off as well, so absenteeism is reduced. So in closing, if there were three things that I really wanted you to take away from my short presentation today, the first is that engagement really matters. Based on the stats that I mentioned, the research around this, leaders cannot afford not to focus on engagement. Either it will do, um, result in lost market share or reduced growth within your organisation. 
Also having a think about where employee, employee engagement sits in the overall movement of an employee through your business. So again, engagement is the result of wise investment in onboarding and development. The outcome is engagement that leads to satisfied, happy employees that are agile, they can move and um, grow within the organisation. That then leads to um, the business growth at the end of that process. Um, the last takeaway that I'd like you to, to have is that um, you can overcome the pitfalls of the more traditional engagement surveys by focusing on a more holistic view of engagement and, um, and a smart use of, use of technology as well. So thank you for taking a little bit of a different view of engagement with me. Um, I look forward to your questions um, at the end. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer any specific questions as well um, after the presentation today. If there's anything burning that you'd like to ask about relating to your business. Thank you very much.